Hey guys, we're here again with another Smith family update to tell you guys what we've been up to, ooh, where we've ooh. been going, um, ooh, and what we've ooh. been doing. Uh, so last time we had gone over to Montana, went to Kootenai Falls, we showed you all of that. Okay, who thought that that whole thing of cars was like the coolest thing? Um, so we got to drive by that twice, and I thought that that was really awesome just to see all the cars lined up. Um, I'm not sure why they're collecting all the old cars, but it was just kind of neat to see them all. So I and just there was a lot was more cars there than what we captured on that um, yes. when we were driving out from the other direction. When we couldn't videotape it, you could you had a different angle and you could see there was way more cars behind all those cars. Yes, but it wasn't safe for me to try to videotape and drive at the same time. So. Anyway, so let's see, what else have we been up to this week? So Ken went and spoke with uh, our friend Christine from Idaho Families. And so you wanna talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so they have this cool thing here called Idaho where it's like um, an organization that was made to help the churches be the church in the community. Um, so it's they do some stuff that's similar to um, state services where they'll come alongside people uh, that are in need through this organization but what they'll do is they'll partner them with a mentor they will come alongside them with a plan to help them instead of like they don't just give a handout or anything like that um, you know if and even if someone needed a their kid they're down on their luck and they need to go do something and whatever like there's a way to actually have them put their kid like in this organization for a week or something with a host family so there's host families, there's mentors, there's um, uh, sponsors who just provide, like maybe a business owner who just provides cheap car repairs or something like that. It's just really cool that uh, this was born out of the pregnancy center because as they found that they were getting um, ladies to not have an abortion, they're like, okay, well, I'm going to keep my baby. Well, now I need help doing life. And so it's like, oh, wow, okay, well, now we need this whole other organization to try to come alongside Idahoan families. And so they first adopted it from some organization in uh, Chicago, and then they tweaked the bylaws and all the things to make it kind of for them, and then they ended up doing their own thing all together. But it's really cool. And so I'm going to partner with them, um, trying to do, like, some fundraising or uh, trying to get partner churches signed up for them. Uh, there's different levels that churches can be involved in the community. So whether they have um, members that are helping actively, whether they're mentors or host homes, or whether they just give money or, or you know, lots of different opportunities for churches. So I'm going to be trying to work in the community to help them partner with churches. Yes. And then I went and met with the same Christine, um, but on the other part of the building, which is the pregnancy center, and I taught a bereavement class, and that went really well. Um, I had slides, and I had books to share, and little handout and everything. So uh, I was pretty excited to be able to do that. And then I also have met with some doulas in the area um, via chats, and then I met with one for coffee. I'm meeting another one tomorrow for coffee and got together with some midwives and uh, we're going to be getting together with some midwives and doulas up in it's called bonner's ferry which is about an hour north of here and we're going to do a get together on july 15th with uh, expecting parents and just talk about what a doula is and how we can help um, and just give information and then hopefully also make connections um so Ken and I have also been exploring the area. We've been checking out different restaurants in the area. Um, this last week, we went to one called Pearls on the Lake. Um, great food, beautiful views of the lake. And as we get out of the restaurant and I turn on the Jeep, the windshield wipers are just going back and forth. And none of my dash lights are on. And so I turn the Jeep off. <laughs> <laughs> and we turn the Jeep back on and the windshield wipers are going and there's no dash lights, but the car's running. So we're like, okay. So we pull over into some shade. Of course, I don't have any tools in the Jeep. Of course we don't. So we pull over in the shade. Ken kind of like pops the engine. We kind of look at things and we're like, well, it's least And then I have running. no service, so I can't. Yeah. Anyway. Can't call anybody. We have no service around here with our T-Mobile phones. Um, 
it's hit and miss, so that's why we try to stay in places where we, we have service and then just know if we're traveling, we, we just can't get a hold of anybody. Um, but shout out to Elon Musk for Starlink, because that works pretty pretty awesome over here. Yes. It's boss and boss and. It's Oh, wait, no, that's for food. That's Sorry. That's food, not that's boss and boss Sorry, Becca. Boss and boss and, not boss and boss and. Boss and boss and. Anyway. Who knows? I'll stop trying to be That's hip. okay. Oh, and Kim, I dropped drip on her, so I just wanted to let you know. She just tells me it's not she cool. She didn't drip drop, she dropped drip. I dropped drip, but she said, that's not cool, I can't I can't use that. So. so apparently Jeeps can have a malfunction where the main computer board needs to be reset, so I just had to disconnect the battery's power and wait and then reconnect it, and then also check the ground to the dash display. Right. Um, but after I reset the power, it was fine. And but we didn't get to do that to normal. until we got back to the house. So, so yeah. we pushed the windshield wipers out from the window. So they're just out there going back and forth. And then we just drove all the way home. Amanda's like got her arm out the window doing hand signals. <laughs> I said, I really hope people around here remember their hand signals left and right and stop and all that. So yeah, yeah. I yeah. got to use my arm, um, and then but a, I got this home. One cool thing I wasn't sure I was going to be able to talk her into, but... Um, We'll show a picture of it on the map uh, during the video. We'll cut this in. Um, but anyway, we went on like this two hour mountainous uh, re drive from up where we are over the mountains and along these ridge lines. And it was so cool. And then dropped down into this town called Athol, which is, you know, on the other end of uh, Ponderay, Lake Ponderay. So. It was a really cool drive, and then we just drove back up home, but that was kind of a little adventure. It was pretty fun. We got some really cool footage from that, so you'll see a little bit of that. Yes, we'll pop a little bit of footage in, and then I'll help find a map, and so we'll show that after our talk here. Um, but we did record like two hours of footage, but we'll just show you a couple minutes. Uh, we went up, up the dirt road, like Ken said, but instead of coming back over the dirt road, we just kind of went around the mountains and came back on the regular right, on the regular highway. Um, so yes, also uh, in the last week, there has been fires, not very far from us, up um, on the hill. They have been trying to extinguish a forest fire that's been going on um, at five days now. Um, and planes and helicopters have just Water been coming and over the property. Two helicopters and I think one or two planes just all day long for five days have been dropping on there. And yes. it's still going good. And um, when we turn on that road from 200 to come up here... There's a quick little bend in the road and you can see this hill and you can see the glow of the fire from off in the distance. At night. Um, and so really, as the crow flies, it's only a couple miles from us, but the prevailing winds blow that way. So we're not really in any risk. If the winds, if there was something, it could happen. It's happened before where the winds blew a certain direction, sustained, um, but it's not likely. But if that did happen... Theoretically, it is close enough that we'd have to evacuate, but it's it's not yes. something that the people are worried about around here. So by the time you're seeing this video, I'm sure they have had gotten the fire out and everything's good. Um, if you're following them on Facebook, you probably have a little bit better of an update of exactly what's going on and where we're at. Um, we're also going to be, um, so you're not going to see it on this video, but you'll see it next week. Uh, in the 4th of July parade and then, you know, some fireworks picks and then some things from that week um, that we went and did. And then the other thing that we've been doing is we have been checking out local coffee shops. And if we like their coffee or a latte that we enjoy there, we have been buying different beans. So we've been trying different coffee brands from different places. Right now we're doing the unicorn. Yes. And we had Goat Mountain last week, um, all from a place called Scotchman's. Uh, cafe, which is right down in Clark Fork, and I believe they roast their own coffee, and they had like six different, seven different blends. So that is our update for right now. We miss you guys terribly. Um, we actually went to three churches this last week. <laughs> so we went to the Calvary, we went to um, one called the Assembly, and we went to a Baptist church right down in Clark Fork. So just trying to get ourselves out there, meet friends. Hey. It was, it was pretty awesome. I never sung hymns before. Um, it was it was really different, like so different, I couldn't even believe it. And maybe some of you have been to a church like that before, but the there was a gal up there just banging away on the old school, old fashioned of piano. And, um, and this dude was up on stage just belting out so that everyone knew the tempo. Uh, 
Yeah, it was really interesting. And you can't raise your hands and worship the Lord when you're holding this humongous hymn book. Hymn book. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, it was pretty interesting. I, it was good, and the message was great, and I, all the people were really nice. I felt a little bit like I was stepped into Little House on the Prairie. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it's a small, it's a very small church right down in town, Clark Fork. So, anyways, again, we love and miss you all. We thank you for following along. Say hello in the comments below. Let us know that you're following us because we can't see who sees the videos. It just shows us that at least somebody's watching. Thank you for our three faithful followers. Um, we're super glad that we can uh, keep everybody up to date on our journey. And again, um, we're still about a week behind or so, maybe even a little bit more than that. So just know that we've still got more cool footage next week. So come back and check us out. What?